Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series Getting Started with Digitising Using the MySona Embroidery Software. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to digitise a plea case. If you're a subscriber, or own a copy of MySoNet, why not subscribe to our free YouTube channel and that way you won't miss out on any of our future episodes. In this video I'm on a PC with the platinum level of software installed but everything I show you today you'll be able to do on a Mac, the principles are exactly the same. You might find it useful to watch two earlier films in the series, Quick Create Tools and Freehand vs Point Create, so you understand how you generate shapes within the MySoNet software. So you can see I've got some geometric shapes loaded into my hoop. The triangle, square and circle I've created by going to the Quick Create tab. I've chosen a satin line outline. I've checked the applique box and then I've chosen that shape from the pull down menu and then clicked shape. But you might see that I've got a diamond here that has got pattern fill and a satin edge. And I just want to take a moment to talk about how you can convert shapes that you've already digitized into a plea case. Now remember, not all shapes will work as a plea case. You might find that very complicated shapes will be very tricky to work as an applique. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my diamond object in the film strip active so I've clicked on it it's blue I'm going to do a right click come down to properties on the pull down arrow um, I'm going to choose no fill now very often with appliques they're finished off with a satin line but I just want to talk about some other options and of course you can choose any of these so in this case I'm going to go with the double stitch and I'm going to check the applique tab in here and I'm going to choose standard applique. Now the default fabric is always this green but I want to take a moment to talk about the applique piece margin. So this would be how much extra outside of the securing line the applique piece has. And because we're going with a double stitch rather than a satin line covering that edge. This would be a raw edge applique. So you might actually want to consider upping this up. And in this case, I'm going to go with three mil. And at this point, I'm going to click apply. I'm just going to move my box over here so you can actually see what's going on here. So you can see that I've got a, um, a diamond of the green fabric and this green is the default if you're doing an applique and you can see that three mils outside of the securing line we have um, uh, the edge of our applique piece. But let me show you some other options that are also within the MySonet software. So if I check select fabric so I'm going to go through all the different types of applique that you can actually use with any of the applique methods. So I've mentioned that the default is this green. If you know the colour fabric that maybe that you're going to be working with, you might actually just want to quickly pop that in. But if you need to be very specific, what you can do is click on the colour box here and a colour wheel opens with many more varieties of. So you can see I've got my um, current purple, but it might be that maybe it's actually a much lighter colour that I'm putting in here. If I need to be really specific, I can check the custom tab and that allows me to be really specific. And if I've got the technical information about the hue, the saturation and the luminosity, I could put that in. Um, and in actual fact, yes, I'm going to go with this teal here. So I'm going to click OK. So you can see that I've got this here. If I wanted to change the uh, the appearance of the texture of that. So for instance, uh, if I want that fabric to uh, have the appearance of maybe fleece, I could do that. I'm going to click OK on that. You can see that 
that choice has been put over here and now when I click apply that's actually been popped in there so I'm going to click OK and let's talk about some of the other options so I'm going to click on the triangle and just like before I'm going to do um, a right click which opens up the uh, fill area and line box and I'm going to click the applique tab so let's talk about what happens with a pre-cut piece so again we've got an explanation here let me just move this out of the way so that you can see so this would be that there would be a running stitch outline that would show where we want in our applique to go uh, the machine would then stop and at that point you would position a cutout of your applique piece so for instance if you've got a fabric cutter or you know exactly the size of that applique piece you would pop that on there you would press play and then the machine would then catch it down with a double stitch and then in this case it would go with a satin line that tends to be the traditional way of doing an applique that you would have a satin line to uh, cover the edge now if you needed to you could actually go onto the line tab and change the width or the density but just be careful about narrowing that width down too much because it's very easy if it's narrowed that it doesn't actually wrap over the edge of your applique piece and you can end up with a not nice effect let's just take a moment to go back to the applique and you can use the different fabric options that I'm showing you with the different applique methods you don't have to use them in the way that I'm using them so I'm going to click select fabric and in this case under the applique type I'm going to check the fabric uh, radio button and this I now got some options here so if I click on this uh, first icon here there are some samples of different types of fabrics that if I wanted to I can load these up there's an option here for my fabrics and I'm going to come back and talk about that in a moment but I'm going to go with the chevrons and I am going to choose uh, let's choose this quite funky green and khaki one I'm going to go OK that's appeared there now if I need to and I know that I want to rotate that I can do and of course it might be that you haven't got this fabric that's not a problem because you can print the pattern pieces out onto iron-on transfer paper so this is a way you can actually create your own unique fabric so I'm going to click OK I can see that this is selected so when I click apply that's popped that in there and again if I press OK you can see that I've got my applique piece in there you might notice that I've got a little pink icon here and if I click on the little round handle I can actually rotate my pattern if I need to match it up in a very specific way let's talk about another option so I'm clicking on the circle I'm doing a right click and that's opening up my fill area and line I'm going to go to the applique tab and in this case I'm going to go to the cutout so this is telling me that the machine would do a double stitch outline so this would be if I want a cutout embroidery I want a hole in my fabric a controlled hole so what would happen here is the machine would uh, stitch out a double stitch outline and then uh, the machine would stop I would then cut a hole inside that stitched outline and in this case I'd maybe pin some water soluble fabric so then it would then be finished out off with a lovely satin outline so let me go to the fabric options and you might have noticed there's a cutout option here so I'm going to click on that and of course I haven't got anything in my uh, swatch indicator because we're not putting a piece of fabric in there we're actually putting essentially a hole in there so I'm going to click OK and then when I click apply 
can you see we've actually got this grey area in here indicating that this is a cutout, this is a hole. I'm going to click OK and let's click on uh, the square and open up the fill area and line properties box. So just like before, I'm going to go to the applique and we haven't talked about the pre-placed piece. And again, the software is telling me what's going on. So what would happen before you actually start stitching, you'd have placed your applique layer exactly in the right spot. The machine would stitch it down with a double stitch and then stop. So allowing you if you needed to trim any bits off, you could. And then it would finish off the edges with the selected border stitching. In this case, I'm sticking with the satin line again. So let's talk about some of the more options with the fabric. So if I choose the picture type, you can see that the picture options has now become active. So I can click select picture. And again, you'll be familiar with this kind of wizard that I could either load or paste a picture in. In this case, I'm going to load my picture. And in this case, I'm going to load this lovely picture of my nephew Rafe. And I'm just going to move the uh, blue handles in. So I'm just going to crop that picture down so I can see what I'm doing on the preview. And then I'm going to click finish. And I can see that I've got this uh, here as an option. So I'm then going to go OK. And I've got the image of Rafe in here. And if I click apply, I'm just going to shift this out of the way because I don't know if you can see, we can see some green on the sides here. And we've got a little bit of space either side here. So my image isn't fitting perfectly. And I, I find the picture option sometimes a little inaccurate. Let me show you a much better way of doing this. So I'm going to go back to the select fabric option. And in this case, I'm going to go to the fabric. I'm going to choose the new background fabric option here. So I'm going to check that. And again, we're familiar with these icons. I'm going to go load a picture and just like before, I'm going to choose that picture of Rafe. I'm going to check OK. I'm going to click Next. Now, this is where the fun really starts, because can you see what's going on on the uh, preview over here? If I wanted to, I can actually crop that down, but I can basically put Rafe into repeat if I want to. So I'm going to click Next. And this is where it's saying, well, how big do you want this picture? And of course, I'm using a photograph of somebody real, but this could actually be a photograph of a piece of fabric that you've got if you wanted to use that. So it's this window is asking me, well, how big do you want this? Now, I know that my uh, square over here is 77 mil. So what I could do is I could actually put this in. If I wanted it to fit perfectly, I could put that in a 77 mil. I can go uh, next. It's going to go into my fabrics uh, folder. I can click finish. And then I'm going to I'm not worried that this, you know, I've got lots of pictures of Rafe here. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click apply. Because can you see I've got the little uh, sort of uh, pink square here that if I want to, oh goodness me, I need to close this down. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go back to the square of the pink and then I can click and I can drag that. And there he is fitting perfectly. But let me go back because there's some more fun we can have with Rafe. So I'm going to go back to my properties. I'm going to go back to my fabric, choose select fabric. And I'm going to uh, recreate that again. So I've got my fabric option here. I'm going to load a new fabric background. I'm going to load a picture, choose Rafe again. Click next. I'm going to, oh 
goodness me, I'm going to uh, bring that corner in. And then when I go next, instead of having, can you remember before I put this in as 77? Let's see what actually happens if I'm going to put this in at, uh, say, 21 mil. And then I'm going to click next. It's going to go into my fabric. So if I need to, I can return to this again and I can click finish. I've got this swatch up here, so I'm going to go OK. And now when I click apply and click OK, can you see I've got lots and lots of pictures of Rafe that if I wanted to, I could move this around and I can also click on the uh, circular part if I wanted to rotate this. So how much fun is that? Now it might be you say, well that's great Karina, you've talked about using cutter pieces and uh, image transfers. How, how do I then get those images? Because I know how to export my embroidery files. How do I access those other files. So let me show you. I can go file and can you see we've got the option here to export my applique pieces and down here we've got the print option and can you see if necessary I can flip my picture for Arnon t-shirt transfer. So hopefully you can see how much control you've got over creating your own appliques within the MySona embroidery software. If you found this a useful film, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so we can help you get started with digitizing using the MySona embroidery software. Happy sewing!